Hi class, welcome back to Advantage. I'm Matt Fisher, I'm your accounting instructor. In the previous video, we took a look at different business sectors. We looked at the service, the merchandising, and the manufacturing service areas. Now, what we're gonna look at here is in the manufacturing area. In manufacturing, we've got materials, work in process, which sometimes we call the WIP inventory, and finished goods. These three are inventory accounts. When we sell the product, that's when we have cost of goods sold, okay? So once again, materials, that's what goes into our product in order to manufacture our item. Direct labor, when we're talking about the direct labor for the product, that is what's directly going in, the people that are directly working on the product and it's going into the product. So we have time cards and we can see how many hours or minutes people are working on the product and then we can put that into the product or attach it to our product. The third cost that takes place here in the plant where we manufacture our product is overhead. And overhead is all the other costs that aren't direct materials and direct labor. So utilities at the plant, the supervisor salaries, janitor salaries, property taxes, depreciation on the manufacturing plant and depreciation on the equipment. That's all overhead, okay? And overhead has three components. Overhead is made up of indirect materials, indirect labor, and all the other indirect costs. So indirect materials would be like, let's say we have to use some oil or grease for our machinery. Well, that's a material and it is in our raw material area, but it wouldn't go right into our product, right? We're not gonna be measuring that per se like we would for other materials that go into our product. It's being used for the machinery. So instead it will go down to our overhead account, which I have down here, okay? So now let's look at some examples here. Let's look at some dollar amounts and how they flow through this process. Once again, we're looking at a manufacturing process. We're manufacturing an item, okay? And we're gonna show the dollar amounts that flow through these inventory accounts and eventually get expensed here. So let me write that on the board. Cost of goods sold is our expense. And then these accounts here are all inventory accounts. They're assets line covers all three of those. All three are inventory accounts. You can see that I already have beginning balances for raw materials, work in process, and finished goods. So we have some raw materials already. We've got some items that are being worked on. Work on process means that we've begun building it, but we haven't finished it. Then once it's finished, those costs will move into finished goods. Now the example that we have in the notes shows like a, a, a column approach, all right? I'm gonna do this video though in a T-account approach. So these are the debits, these are the credits. And since these are assets, debits will increase this asset and a credit will decrease. Debit increase, the credit will decrease. The debit will increase, the credit will decrease. So this is the increasing, decreasing side. Same thing for our overhead account. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Let's say that during the period, we purchased $50,000 worth of materials. So now we've got $50,000 added to the thousand. So we've got 51,000. Let's say during this time period, $40,000 of direct materials were moved out. So if it's direct materials, then it goes directly into work in process. Okay, so they come out of raw materials, there's the credit, and then you would debit work in process, out of raw materials into work in process. So our debit and our credit, we're in balance if we're looking at journal entries. Okay, if we had some indirect materials, so let's say we have 5,000 in indirect materials, those would go down into our overhead account. So if they have grease and other items that they need, janitorial products, things like that, some, some materials, it would move into overhead if they're indirect, meaning they don't go directly into the product. They're hard to measure. Um, these are easy to measure items that move right into our product. Okay, so work in process now. We've got 40,000 of materials. We started with base, we've got 48,000. 
let's say that our direct labor is 25,000. So I add 25,000 into work in process. So that's labor costs going in. And let's say that we have 30,000 of overhead going into this account, okay? It needs to come out of overhead here and make its way into work in process here, okay? So this is done on an allocated basis. So let's talk about overhead for a second now. In, the, in another lecture, we're gonna show how this is done, but this is an allocated basis, meaning we're probably gonna use direct labor hours or maybe square footage. We're gonna use some measure in order to calculate how we're going to put this in here. So we'll have a, a, usually a rate. For overhead, let's assume that we also had additional overhead costs of 27,000, okay? So we had 5,000 of indirect materials. We had another 27,000 that's made up of indirect overhead, such as indirect labor and other indirect costs, okay? So these are actual costs coming in. These are actual items that we purchased or paid for coming in. And then they come out of this account into work in process as we're manufacturing this product that we make, okay? So now you can see these are the items that are in work in process. Now, some of these items that we're working on will be finished. They'll be done. So let's, let's assume that $90,000 worth of items were completed. So then that needs to transfer over into finished goods. So you can see here, we would debit finished goods inventory and credit work in process inventory. So it's just moving between two inventory accounts. All right, and the term for this is the cost of goods manufactured. So I'm gonna abbreviate here, COGM, cost of goods manufactured. So that 90,000 is cost of goods manufactured. That's coming out of work in process, going into finished goods. Now, finished goods is still an inventory, but when we sell the items, then we need to move that cost out of finished goods into cost of goods sold. Let's assume that $85,000 worth of items were actually sold. So then that needs to go into cost of goods sold. So this is the term, the cost of goods sold amount, $85,000. Okay, so you can see our cost of goods sold is $85,000. let us look at our ending balances for all of these accounts. We have $96,000 debit, $85,000 credit. So our ending balance would be $11,000 in finished goods. So our next time period, we would start with $11,000 in finished goods. If we add up all of these debits and subtract out this credit, we'll get $13,000 here. So that's our ending balance for work in process. We've got 45,000 here, 51,000 here. So that's 6,000. And then our ending overhead account will have a balance of 2,000. We've got 32 minus 30 gets us 2,000. So there are ending account balances, and this is how costs move through inventory and eventually get sold. Now remember, this is taking place in the manufacturing plant. These are the product costs. And product costs only incur, are incurred in the manufacturing plant. All the other value chain areas are period costs. These are the product costs. All right, class, I hope this has helped and I hope to see you in the next video.